week's Torah portion, Vayigash, brings us the dramatic conclusion of the saga of Joseph and his brothers, the reconciliation, and then the eventual reunion of Joseph and his aged father, who had feared him dead from over two decades. The portion begins with Yehuda emerging as the unquestioned leader of the brothers, challenging his brother Joseph at that time, unbeknownst to him, who is the ruler of Egypt, for the safe return of the younger brother Benjamin so they can bring him home to Jacob. Curiously, there is a shift that happens that Judah, the much maligned Judah of the previous two portions, the Judah who orchestrates the sale of Joseph, Judah who stumbles in his relationship with his daughter-in-law Tamar, who tragically loses his wife and two sons, yet he emerges to become the leader of the brothers. And then subsequently, it is Jacob who chooses Judah, not Joseph, to become the leader of the future of the Jewish people, to build the house of the kingdom and the Mashiach dynasty, which will come from Judah. And the question is why? Joseph, a paragon of excellence, a paradigm of virtue, who shows and harbors no ill will to his brothers. Joseph, who is already a ruler, who has shown that he can save the entire world from starvation, building a master plan of, de- of sustenance for all of civilization, who rules justly and fairly. It would seem logical that he would be the obvious choice to be the leader going into the future. And yet, Suddenly, Jacob prefers Judah, and he tells Judah that Judah is going to become the leader. And in this week's Torah portion, he actually sends him ahead to start, as Rashi says, a yeshiva, a house of learning. The first institution of Torah study was founded by Judah in Egypt, whom Jacob entrusts that Judah should be the head of the yeshiva to lead it. And the question is, how does Judah go from being the one who orchestrates the sale, so that one who is heavily compromised in every single episode up until this point, and to now he becomes the brother who they all look up to and the leader, including Joseph, who then is told that he's not going to be the leader of the future. It'll be Judah, the house of David, the house of Mashiach, all emerge from the tribe of Judah. My friends, today we are called Jews. In Hebrew, we are the Yehudim. Literally, it means that we are the descendants of Yehuda, of Judah. We are not called the children of Joseph or the children of any specific tribe. Yes, we are called Bnei Yisrael, we are Israelites, but specifically, we are Jews. And the definition of a Jew means that we trace our spiritual lineage to Yehuda, the originator of the Jewish people, because it is Yehuda who testifies to what a definition of a Jew really is. The name Yehuda means, I submit, I admit. We wake up every single morning and the first prayer we utter from our lips is, Mode Ani, the root word of Yehuda of Judah. Judah lived his entire life recognizing that he must submit and resubmit again and always realize that no matter what happened yesterday, today is a new opportunity. Don't ever get stuck in the past. The word Torah comes from the word Hora'ah we've mentioned many times. It is a guide, it is a lesson. The Torah telling us these episodes of high drama are not there merely to titillate or give us these ridiculous and moving episodes of our history. The Torah is there to give us guide and lessons for our daily life. And perhaps this is the most important lesson. Yes, Joseph is a tzaddik. He is Yosef a tzaddik. Yosef is the ideal. He never gets angry. He never takes revenge. He is a virtue and a paragon of excellence. But it is Yehuda who most exemplifies the journey of a Jew. He stumbles. He falls, 
but he gets back up. He suffers, but he doesn't give up. And perhaps this is why Jacob realizes himself in Judah the most. You see, Judah paid a very high price. He lost his wife. He lost his eldest two children. And Jacob realizes that Yehuda now can identify and empathize with what Jacob went through losing his son. And Yehuda says, Father, don't give up on me. I will be better. I promise you, I will bring Benjamin back. You can rely on me. Yehuda tells us that the definition of a Jew is not to be held hostage by the events of our past. And this is why Torah teaches us this story and teaches us this lesson. Yes, it is true. Joseph emerged as the first ruler of the Jewish people. His descendant, King Saul, was the first king of the Jewish people. Saul came from the house of Joseph. But his kingship lasted one generation. Conversely, Yehuda emerges, and then his children, the house of David, is the Davidic line that will last till Mashiach and beyond. Why? Because David represents overcoming challenge, overcoming obstacle, not letting the skeletons of your past define you the present and your future. And so while Joseph remains the unbelievable image, the great tzaddik that we look up to, we identify most with Yehuda because a king, a leader, has to be able to identify with his subjects. Yosef perhaps does not understand feelings of jealousy or vengeance. Yehuda does. And so the king of the Jewish people, the leader of the Jewish people, needed to be entrusted with someone who carries within him the heart and the soul of the Jewish people. Maimonides tells us the king of the Jewish people is the heart of the Jewish people, the beating heart. Judah exemplifies that because he is the never say die. He is the never give up. And this is the profound lesson we must learn from our Torah portion. God tells us that we never know what's going to happen in the future. We may think that if we fall or if we fail once and twice, that we can never get to the top of the mountain. Those people that we look to, the Josephs of the world, the paragons of excellence, those who are virtuous, we can't identify with them. They have no problems in their lives or they don't even look at the problems in their life as problems. Joseph never saw anything that happened in his life as a problem. Everything is a blessing from God. Those people are very, very inspiring, but they are hard to relate to because those are not everyday people who we know in our lives as well. Judah, though, is the one who gets very messy. His life is messy. He gets involved and enmeshed in everyday problems and struggles that we can identify with. And yet he emerges to become the unquestioned and unchallenged leader precisely because he keeps fighting, he keeps battling, those demons, he keeps getting up every single time he falls down stronger than before. That is a leader. That is someone that Mashiach, the Messiah, is coming most to our world to teach us that out of the darkness, out of the struggle of Galut, comes the Mashiach, comes the great light. May God bless us that we identify and embrace the Yehuda, the Yehudim, the Jew within us, the Jew that was given that night by the angel to Jacob, that we struggle, but we never give up. And that is why Jacob eventually passes the mantle to Judah over Joseph, because he sees in his son Judah what the blessing that was given to him, the, con the continuation of Jacob. Ki sarita vatuchal, you keep fighting all night until dawn breaks, never give up, never give up, keep fighting. And when we do, no matter what happened in the past, the teshuva can carry us to a place that we can never have imagined before. And this is why the Torah tells us these stories about Yehuda, not to denigrate, but the opposite, to elevate and to teach us to what heights a human being can raise to, no matter what level he's fallen to, if we don't stop believing that we have the innate power within us to overcome every obstacle, both physical and spiritual. Never be ashamed, never be embarrassed of our past. It's only a catalyst for the greatest light and the greatest growth 
that will come from it. That is Mashiach. That is King David. That is King David and all his descendants that David exemplified from his ancestor Judah. After every time King David falls down, he says, Khatati, and then he moves on and composes the most beautiful psalm. He elevates his angst and his experience and his anxiety to the greatest connection and relationship with God. He does not allow it to hamper and to confine him for the rest of his life, but rather he uses it as a liberating force because he realizes that the mission while we are in this world is to take those dramatic moments of the Judah moments of our lives. The Joseph, Joseph will emerge. After Mashiach comes, then Joseph reunites with Judah once again, as the Haftorah of this week teaches us, that one day Joseph and Judah will come together and become one. But until that great light of Mashiach, when we all become tzaddikim and, and, and righteous, the way the perfect Joseph is, we struggle. We are the struggling Jew, the struggling Yehuda, who gets up every morning and says, Mo ani, I never stop thanking, I never stop acknowledging, I never stop submitting again, once again and again and again. And no matter how many times, no matter how many times we slip and fall, it's only a reason to get back up again, prouder and stronger. This is the title of Yehuda. This is the, the label of a Jew. This is the true legacy of Yisrael, not to win, but to fight, to keep at the fight until that great day when Judah and Joseph, when Mashiach and the great light of the Baal Tshuva, the struggler and the tzaddik become one and united for once and for all. Shabbat Shalom.